Bandericon Captain's Log. Uh, close to the Ledge, Episode 5. Uh, this is, in an ironic sense, more relevant to this game. Uh, I am alive. Uh, this was a game that I, and I'm spitballing massively, I think came out around the PS3 era, um, slash Xbox 360 time. Now, I occasionally get a strange feeling about games that something is destined to be absolutely fucking amazing. And I got that feeling about Infamous 1 and 2. I got that feeling slightly less about Prototype. And I got that feeling about this game, and it has a draw. To break it down in simple, the game in itself deals with a kind of post-apocalyptic event where your character is surviving in the ruins of a nondescript American city, USA, where something has happened and it's kicked up a shitload of uh, dust, which is basically lethal to the character. And the game, in essence, barring a few areas I remember, is basically done in grayscale, but not like black and white, like kind of a dirty yellow sand color. Uh, which gets played into extra when your character ventures down to ground level. Uh, again, it's been years since I played it, and I have never got around to finishing it. I will at some point. But basically, um, it, it kind of imagine post 9-11 Ground Zero, where it's kicked up all that horribly toxic dust mixture of like concrete, and micro glass, and plastics to the power of fucking immediate gameplay mechanic where, uh, as I remember it, at least quick time when your character goes down first will start actively losing health or stamina and then at some point they get a gas mask which gives them a little bit more longevity. Um, the game in itself kind of takes on a Prince of Persia-ish climbing mechanic combined with a fairly clunky stamina mechanic where you're you get the idea that you, you have a temporary stamina, which is like a bar that decreases as you climb, and then if you wear through it, you decrease your permanent stamina, which you can only replenish via consumables such as meat, water, stuff like that. Uh, it felt clunky as fuck, um, especially because your character gets a bunch of consumable pitons, which they can basically anchor into any climbing point and use as a rest spot, which feels both smart and stupid because your character can be on the edge of collapsing from exhaustion and sink in a pit on, and but they won't regain any of it. Uh, but then again, and, and all is forgiven, and I will explain shortly from now, barring clunky climbing mechanic, you have the ability to hold people up at gunpoint, even with an empty gun, um, because it's by and large not a combat game. You are a desperate scavenging survivor who's come across several times other desperate scavenging survivors and holy shit you pull a gun and they think you have a loaded gun and they will try you and again the game kind of falters on this idea that you can either back one up to an edge and then kick them over or if you have the ammunition shoot one kick the other over or get close enough to stab them in the face of the machete and every so often you come across a dude who's wearing football pads which makes them basically bulletproof now I'm going to cut through a bunch of bullshit to get to the chase here this game was not finished, and we forever live in a world where this game was not finished. It was originally a full AA release that unfortunately fell victim of budgetary constraints and other such things that meant that everything I've explained to you, every sawn off feature that I've given you like climbing and stamina and pitons and chasing people to ledges to kick them off is just a symptom of something that where they had to make the best of what they had and they just kind of bundled all the features into a, a handkerchief and tied it off at the end and sold it out the door this is a game that could have been incredible there could have been a full feature length story in fact the story even doesn't end properly it's just kind of it's all being told through a video camera and the main characters may be dead or not and there's a sequel somewhere in the pipeline. It never happens. And we don't get to see it. And we never will. But it's still worth playing if only to see the what could have been and the what is. Um, and it's 
Shit, I'm gonna have to finish it at some point, and I will. I just... I'm not ready to live through that. Because my brain is always gonna project the, Oh, well, this could have been fantastic. Pity we're never gonna live through enough to see it. And... No, I'm, I'm not ready. God damn it. <sighs> Call to action. Go and play this game. It's like $15 American and $12.49 UK. I... I would say it is just kind of doing your bit to preserve heritage, history, and it's the history that nobody knows about. Everyone's gonna go and play Mist or Day of the Tentacle or some other crap that has been played to death back in the fucking DOS era, but really nobody's gonna play this. There's about 2,000 reviews on Steam and most of them are Russian. Um, it's just worth preserving. Probably maybe 5,000 people have played this on Steam Tops, and barely anyone's put any time on this. But it's worth it. Anyway, Bandera Con out. Go and play this game.